So a very warm welcome to all of you to this step-by-step -step guide to effective pre-thinking for CR on the GMAT questions. Uh, before we begin this session, let me just uh, uh, give you a very brief introduction about myself. I'm your host for this session. My name is Sunita Singhvi, and I have been with the test prep industry for almost a decade now. I have uh, prepped students for various entrance exams, including the GMAT, and I'm the verbal expert at GMAT Wiz. Now, uh, let me just start sharing my screen and give me a moment for before that. Oh. Okay, there it is. So, all right. Okay, so uh, let me just quickly uh, tell you how this uh, seminar will be uh, divided. Uh, the session will be divided, or the time will be divided. So, what we'll do is, um, this is myself here. What we'll do is, there will be three sections to this webinar. The first section, very briefly, we will quickly talk about who we are, who, what GMAT Wiz is, and what it brings to the table. The main part of the webinar that will be the second part, where we will talk about all the various, uh, uh, what is pre-thinking and how to pre-think successfully using our uh, special guides. And finally, there will be time given to you for your FAQs, your question answers, which I'll be very glad to answer. So uh, let's start with who uh, we are. Now, GMAT Wiz um, is one company which actually uh, caters to what students need. So if we talk about what students need, the major pain points of students that we have identified over the, over the years of research that we have conducted and through our experience of teaching is that they plan their studies themselves, uh, and therefore, they have to analyze their own strengths and weaknesses that is on their own. And they don't really get individual attention, even if they are attending classroom coaching. So you, you are being taught in a group. And let's be very frank, most of the attention is hogged by the front benchers and people who are, let's say, weaker, comparatively weaker, and who are not uh, in the you know, the not front benchers or not the ones who are gaining the attention of the uh, teacher, instructor, they are kind of left out. They feel left out. You know, you might also feel that you are not very comfortable asking questions in the classroom. So all these things put together, as in you're planning your studies yourself. So uh, you don't know how to do that. Or even if you do plan it successfully, you, you do not always stick to the plan and so on analyzing your strengths and weaknesses on your own and not really getting the attention that you need. These are the major pain points um, that students face in our opinion. All right, so uh, what we've uh, understood is that in order to uh, make sure that these, these are the things that students don't keep facing, what we have done is we have made sure that we come up with a planner which will prepare a study plan for you, all right, depending on the time that is available to you, okay? Now, this plan will be very different from the plans that usually are prepared for you. So, the plans that you prepare for yourselves or plans that other institutes prepare for you, they do not adapt as you learn. So, a plan which has been made for you, let's say for a month or two months or three months, it remains static. It does not change as you move forward in the plan. So, let's say after a month into the plan, if you have made a certain progress, your plan should adapt or change accordingly, but that does not happen. In our, what we have brought to the table is we have brought a plan which is going to, uh, which is dynamic, which changes based on the pace of your preparation into the study plan. Then if you look at the statistics, okay, uh, the statistics that a lot of institutes share with you, okay, wherever you are taking your prep, they tell you this is where you're doing well or this is not this is where you're not doing well but what are you supposed to do with that statistic that does not really uh, those insights don't really give you any uh, define any course of action all right so when we provide you uh, uh, the statistics of your performance we actually provide you statistics which will uh, tell you what to do okay what is the action to be taken on those statistics or th that data and Finally, 
when we talk about individual attention so even if you turn to private tutoring it is very very expensive it's not affordable so if you look at all of this stuff all right then gmat Wiz brings a revolutionized way of teaching students the most efficient and effective way of learning we provide a, a platform which will give you feedback in real time it's a, a dynamic platform which will tell you where you're going wrong and redirect you to the particular part of the course where you uh, which you have not understood properly and then you know take your uh, path forward all right so that's all about gmat Wiz. Uh, let us now enter the main part of this webinar and that is uh, how to effectively pre-think in cr questions all right okay so uh, the the first couple of things that we've noticed is when we talk about cr the point is why do students falter at cr where is it that they go wrong when solving cr questions so there are two areas that we've identified majorly two reasons rather where students two areas where students falter and therefore they land up making mistakes so one of those areas is not being able to identify the scope of the conclusion okay faltering at identifying the scope of the conclusion uh, uh, because of this often students end up choosing out of scope choices as the correct answer all right and the other is faltering at pre-thinking now because of this a lot of time is actually wasted in going back and forth between the passages and the choices and the incorrect choices are usually what you land up with so in this session we will focus on these two pain points okay uh, what do we mean by the scope of the conclusion or scope of the argument and what does it really mean to prethink? so hold on to that um, so the question, what is pre-thinking, all right? Now, uh, most of you who have been preparing for GMAT or are going to do so would have heard of the term pre-thinking. It's not a new term. So uh, um, I have heard various ways of, uh, various definitions of pre-thinking. People define pre-thinking as, you know, uh, it is predicting the correct answer beforehand or it is analyzing the passage properly. And then there are uh, there is a school of thought which says it means focusing on the gaps in the author's reasoning using the understanding drawn from the passage so uh, let me ask you and you can put your answers in the uh, in the poll or uh, in the chat box all right what according to you of these three is pre-thinking all right so what according to you is pre so what according to you of these three things is pre-thinking let me have some more answers guys so that we can make this session uh, an interactive one it's very intuitive but i would still like to know from you what according to you is pre-thinking all about is it being able to predict what is going to be the correct answer what is it yes all right so okay so i have some of you uh, some of you have chosen b then again some of you have chosen a uh, sunny says it is c all right so let's see that means you are confused about what this pre-thinking is some of you believe that it is about being able to tell beforehand what is the correct answer that is before seeing the answer choices some of you believe it is reading the passage correctly and properly and some of you believe that it is about focusing on the gaps or the the holes that the author's reasoning has well let me put all this to rest and tell you what pre-thinking really is so when we talk about pre-thinking what we are looking at is very simply put uh, a way of thinking ahead now before we talk about a, a way of thinking ahead what is very important is something that is required before you even start to pre-think so when it, when we say think clearly it means um, we are talking about thinking along a certain lines pre-think does not mean thinking out of the blue all right so 
thinking along what lines for that the prerequisite is you should have a crystal clear understanding of the passage and the conclusion in the passage if there is any conclusion you cannot pre-think you cannot pre-think successfully if you have not understood every word of the stimulus or the passage and if you have not understood the scope of the conclusion all right what happens is if you have do not have a crystal clear understanding of the passage is you know you if you are just skimming through the passage all right in your hurry if you're just glossing over the passage what happens is you understand some parts of the passage and there are certain parts that you remain confused but you move on okay you move on with reading the rest of the passage what you probably think in your mind is i will get back to this part later on if i come across any issue and then later when going through the answer choices what happens is students are already stressed out under a time bias uh, they know they have to quickly complete solving the questions so then what happens next is they start marking answers in a certain manner so because of the incomplete understanding of the stimulus students go back and forth between the stimulus and the answer choices and i'm sure many of you will identify with this okay they waste time because of this they choose out of scope answers or they mark incorrect answer choices preceding the correct one or when they are confused between two choices what happens is they fall uh, low on confidence which eventually also hurts the sc and rc performances later on okay so at this juncture students believe they are making a mistake with the choices but the mistake was actually made a long time back while reading the passage without full understanding what do i mean by this now let me uh, I'll, I'll give you an example and demonstrate to you what an incomplete understanding can do all right um so uh what i want you to do is go through this and depending uh, go through the passage and i'll also give you some choices and i'll just put up a poll all right so just give me a moment here is the passage it's a very short one and after reading it just answer which of these four options is true as per the information given in the passage which of these options is true as per the information given in the passage Now, it's a very simple paragraph here, passage here. So I'll just give you, I'll, I'll count up to 10. And if those of you have not marked your answer choices, you can put in your answer choices. So let me just quickly do that countdown. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one so i'm going to end the poll all right now what we have here is the the class is divided equally over choice b and choice d now before i uh, discuss this okay so um uh, how many of y'all felt that there could have been okay hold on to that thought so 50% well, of you have chosen choice B and 50% of, of you have chosen choice D. Now, before I tell you what the correct answer is, what I will do is I will quickly um, analyze the passage for you. I'll show you how you should analyze the passage properly before you move on to the pre-thinking. Okay, so here goes the analysis of the passage. All right. Now, 
Uh, yeah, just a moment. Okay. One minute, guys. Yeah. So when we are talking about analyzing the passage, what we should do is break the sentences into small chunks and understand them completely and clearly and then only move on. So here goes high levels of fertilizers and pesticides. So we are talking about high quantities or doses of fertilizer and pesticides. Okay. Needed when farmers try to produce high yields. All right. So we are talking about high quantities of or doses of fertilizers and pesticides are required to be used by farmers when they are trying to produce large quantities. Now, this when is important, okay? Because of the when, we can infer that low levels of fertilizer and pesticides will not give high yields of the same crop if it is grown year after year, all right? Let's read on. Of the same crop year after year. So, if no gap is left in between of even a single year, if you grow the same crop year after year, high uh, levels of fertilizers and pesticides will be needed to produce high yields. Okay. And thereafter, it's given pollute water supplies. That means here we are being told that this use, this use of fertilizers, high level of fertilizers and pesticides causes water supplies in that area to get polluted. Okay. Fine. So, so far what we have, the understanding that we have is a certain dose of fertilizers and pesticides are needed if you want to produce a high yield by growing the same crop year after year, okay, you will need high levels of fertilizers and pesticides, but this will pollute the water supplies. Fine. Let's move to the next sentence. Experts therefore urge farmers to diversify their crops. All right. So, because of this pollution, the therefore tells us that it is because of that pollution, the water pollution, experts earnestly request or encourage farmers not to cultivate the same crop, but to cultivate different crops, okay, diversify their crops, all right? And then it is given and to rotate their plantings yearly. So these different crops, again, should not be planted every year, okay? Rather, the farmer should keep rotating the plantings of different crops on a yearly basis, all right? Okay, let's now read the last. So, the advice offered by the experts in order to combat the water pollution problem is that they should not only diversify crops, but keep changing those crops every year as well. They should rotate their crops. That is, so some total, they should not grow the same crop year after year in order to avoid water pollution. So, a crystal clear, clear understanding so far. Let's finish reading the last sentence of the passage. To receive governmental price support benefits for a crop. Okay, so what does this mean? In order to get the benefit of good prices or price support from the government for a particular crop, what should the farmers do? The farmers must have produced that same crop for the past several years. All right, so in order to get the price benefit from the government, the farmers, it is mandatory for the farmer to have produced the same crop for past several years. All right. That means what we have is, so what, what we have, the understanding that we have is, one part tells us the need for high levels of fertilizers for a high yield by growing the same crop. The other part tells us that growing the same crop has certain effects. And those, in order to combat those effects, that is water pollution, rotation of crops and diversification of crops should be done. On the other hand, we have been given that if you want the price support for a particular crop from the government, you should have, you should actually grow the same crop. So one part of the passage tells us that you should not grow the same crop. The other part tells us that uh, the same crop must be grown for a certain benefit. All right. Now tell me how many of you are there who believe now who want to uh, revise their, uh, let's say, answers. You can answer me in the chat box. How many of you all want to revise your answers? Or if you want to see the answer again, I can do that. I can, I can show you the answers once more. So let me just go back. Okay, let me just 
go back to that slide. Here, here you are. Sorry. Yeah. So you can look at these and let me see how many of y'all want to uh, revise this. Okay. Yes. Anybody who wants who wants to say something, who says that no, I want to change my choice. So uh, now let me or let me put this question to you. How many of y'all believe that whatever you marked earlier is not correct? So if you believe it's not correct, just say me and that will be done in the chat. How many of y'all believe that what you marked as the correct answer choice is not correct? Yes, guys. You can look at the uh, options. Yes, guys, how many of y'all would like to change your, I'm not asking you which choice you want to change it to, but how many of y'all would like to change your answer choices? So you can just answer a me in the chat. And I would know that you want to change your answer choices. How many of y'all want to change that? Come on, guys. I'm sure there would be some of you, I mean, we had people divided over two choices. So some of you would want to change your choices. Yes? All right. So I think everybody is a little hesitant out here. How many of you all believe that none of these answer choices are correct? How many of you believe that none of this none of these answer choices are correct yes how many of you all believe that none of these answer choices are correct quickly yes guys no answer what happened to everybody Okay, I guess everybody is a little scared. <laughs> so now if I look at each of these choices, okay, the problem of water pollution, choice A, the problem of water pollution from fertilizers and pesticides could be solved by taking farmland out of production. Now, in the passage, there is nothing mentioned about a solution to water pollution by taking out farmland, farmland, taking farmland out of production. So this is definitely not true per the information given in the passage okay fine thereafter the second choice choice b farmers can continue to make a profit by rotating diverse crops now uh, the passage tells us that uh, the experts are advising the farmers to diversify crops now, if the farmers diversify, diversify their crops, it is quite possible that they may not need to use high levels of fertilizers and pesticides. And that might save them some crops. So if we look at the first part of choice B, it, 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 it is true. Farmers can continue to make a profit by rotating diverse crops. They would be saving some money on the fertilizers and pesticides. Can is the uh, can is the word to be noticed here. They can. Thus reducing costs for chemicals. So, so far we can infer from the passage. But look at the next half. But not by planting the same crop each year. So the rest of this choice tells us that farmers cannot continue to make profit by planting the same crop each year. They can continue to make profit by rotating the crops, but they cannot continue to make profits by planting the same crop each year. Now we know that if they plant the same crop each year, they will get price benefit from the government. Therefore, we know the second half of choice B is incorrect. Okay, second half of choice B is incorrect. So let me ask all of you a question here. Uh, let me ask you, a, uh, put up a poll actually. So how many of y'all, okay, 
how many of y'all believe, uh, how many of y'all, those who mark choice B, have understood where they went wrong? Those of you who mark choice B, have you understood where you went wrong? Those of you who marked choice B as the correct choice, have you understood where you went wrong, guys? Great. Therefore, not just analyzing the passage carefully, but reading the answer choices carefully is also required. So those of you who did not have a clear understanding of the passage would land up with choices like this. OK, and which is why the point that I'm trying to establish is even before you get into pre thinking, your analysis of the passage has to be thorough. Then only I can tell you or we can talk about what really pre thinking is. All right. It is definitely not predicting the answer beforehand. It is also not just about analyzing the passage. There's a lot more than that, and we will discuss that. All right. So there goes choice B. Now, uh, with the end of choice B, what we are left with is C and D. Okay. So let's see. If you're talking about C and D, C says new farming techniques will be developed to make it possible. What will happen in the future? Nothing is given in the passage about that. So C is definitely out. Now, the rest of the 50% of the class chose choice D. Governmental price supports for farm products. So we're talking about the price benefit to be provided by the government are set at levels that are not high enough to allow farmers to make adequate profits. Now, we know that all that we know about governmental price support is they uh, for that the farmers have to grow the same crop year after year but we cannot infer anything we cannot understand from the passage anything about the level of this price support and whether it allows the farmers to make enough profits or not okay all we know is if the farmers grow the same crop they will get the price benefit whether that price benefit will be sufficient adequate inadequate nothing can be inferred and therefore choice d is also incorrect Okay, so again, uh, a lot of you, 50% of the class had chosen choice D. So my question again to you is for those of you who chose choice D, have you understood why choice D is incorrect? Those of you who marked choice D as the correct answer choice, have you understood why choice D is incorrect? Yes, have you understood why choice D is incorrect? Choice D talks about uh price support levels about which nothing has been mentioned in the passage so let me repeat my question so that i get an answer from you uh those of you who mark choice d have you understood why choice d is incorrect okay let me still quickly repeat it uh, choice d says the uh, the government price support level is not high enough now tell me in the passage, is there any information about the level of price support offered by the government? Any information about the level of price support? No. All it is given is if a farmer wants to receive the price benefit from the government, that farmer must grow the same crop. But whether that level is ample enough or not for farmers to make profits, we cannot say for certain. All right, we cannot say for sure. It is possible in some scenarios that if the farmers grow the same crop to get the government support, they might, uh, they would have to use the, they would have to grow the same crop and they would have to use high levels of fertilizers. It is possible that they can still make adequate profits. It is also possible they may not be able to make adequate profits. So choice D is not 100% inferable uh, piece of information from the paragraph so let me again ask those of you who chose choice d is it clear to you why choice d is incorrect guys is it clear to you why choice d is incorrect is it clear to you why choice d is incorrect great all of you are in agreement so now that choice d has been proved incorrect you might be wondering if choice d is incorrect okay then what is the correct answer choice well let's see so none of these were correct right which leaves us with the question if these are not correct so let me just quickly go forward 
a bit. We've already discussed all these. Okay. So if all those cannot be concluded, what can be concluded? Now I want you to frame an answer choice, whatever in your opinion can be concluded from the paragraph because we're looking at drawing an inference from the paragraph, right? So I want you to tell me, and you can type your answers in the chat box, guys, and do interact, okay? Then only we'll be able to move forward with, a, a, you know, some a good addition to our uh, knowledge. So you tell me what can be concluded from the paragraph in your opinion, okay? Let me just, so I, I'm waiting for your answers. Please put your answers in the chat. What do you think we can conclude from the uh, this passage? So I'll give you uh, about 15 seconds to just briefly put uh, together a conclusion that can be drawn. Going by the discussion that we've had on the passage, what can be concluded? Look closely, recall the analysis. So what did the farmers have to do in order to avoid water pollution? What the farmers have to do in order to get the price support benefit and put those things together and what can be concluded? I'm waiting for your answers. Let's come on. So I'm going to start counting now so that I have some of your answers here and then I can read them out. Okay, so here goes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, and one. Okay, one of the answers that I have here is that uh, if uh, the farmers, uh, okay, let me read them one by one. So Nishan says water pollution can't be controlled if farmers opt for government aid and opt for high yield. Very good, Nishan. The two things cannot happen together. Very good. There's another person here who says that if uh, the farmers keep producing the same crop year after year, they will keep polluting the water and they will, though they will get the government price support. That is also correct. So you see how you guys are putting together the information correctly now. All right. Which means the a, a correct answer on this would have been something like this. Okay, let's see. It would have been something like this. The rules for governmental support of prime farm price. Okay, what are the what are the rules for governmental support for of farm price? That the same crop should be grown year after year. Work against efforts to reduce water pollution. So the efforts to reduce water pollution require rotating crops. The rules for governmental support of farm prices require growing the same crop. Therefore, the two work against each other, and that is what we can conclude. So. Um, uh let me apologize for laying that trap for you but i wanted to prove a point and that is for pre-thinking what you need to have is a clear understanding of the passage the moment you realize that you haven't really understood what you were reading in the stimulus please don't move ahead complete your understanding there and then okay and then you move forward because every word matters so Moving forward with uh, what pre-thinking is. Pre-thinking is ideally you are focusing on the logical gaps. So in the previous paragraph that we just saw, we were given several pieces of information. So the pre-thinking there involved to bring together those pieces of information, you know, to bridge the gap. The gap between what water pollution supply, uh, 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 what efforts for water pollution were requ required, and what governmental price support required okay so when we talk about pre-thinking and listen to this carefully it is 
focusing on the logical gaps it is all about using the results of the analysis of the passage to find the gaps between what is given the given information and the conclusion and then you think of what can fill those gaps the ideas that fill up those gaps successfully are the product of your pre-thinking and they will guide you in eliminating the incorrect choices and choosing the correct one all right so the given information we know is the premise the missing information is the assumption so when we are pre-thinking we are basically thinking about this piece of missing information and put together okay they form the argument the premise and the assumption put together lead to the conclusion forming the argument thus if we had to define pre-thinking pre-thinking is nothing uh, but thinking what it is that the author took for granted or assumed while reaching the conclusion but forgot to state or uh, put it uh, in print in the stipulus now i'm sure many of you are thinking to yourselves does pre-thinking then mean some random or arbitrary thinking like conjuring up ideas from thin air well the answer to that is not necessarily we have prepared a pre-thinkers guide okay guys All right uh, and this guide has frameworks for pre-thinking for some common constructions on the gmat cr questions okay these frameworks can be used to think along certain lines so guided thinking all right which makes this pre-thinking very efficient and spot on and you will see that all right so um you now one small thing uh, i would like to uh, tell you guys if you have any queries in between the discussion of any question just hold on to that once i'm through with the discussion you can put forward your queries all right okay so where was i yeah so we were talking about uh, this uh, guide that we have prepared which will help you pre-think okay but before we talk about the guide let me also discuss with you what is the purpose of this guide okay what is the objective of the pre-thinkers guide that we have and which contains frameworks along which you can think pre-think so what are the main problems of a pre-thinker okay so often students they are clueless when they are asked to pre-think okay i'm sure there have been times when you don't know what and how to pre-think for a certain question uh, they sometimes put their time and energy into thinking in the wrong direction and that is not pre-thinking that is like useless thinking okay so what happens as a result of this is uh, you come up with half-baked or incorrect assumptions and obviously then you land up choosing the incorrect answer choices and so so what is the solution to all of this okay what is the solution well the aim of the pre-thinkers guide is to lay down simple frameworks and you can use these frameworks to pre-think more efficiently and effectively okay so in our pre-thinkers guide in the gmat whiz course we have prepared four frameworks based on the four most common construction types so let's quickly discuss these types and then we will discuss a couple of frameworks today in this session which will where i will show you how to think uh, pre-think effectively all right and efficiently so uh, the four most common construction types when i say i'm not saying these are the only types but these are very common okay and we have identified this by doing a thorough research uh, on the og questions so gmat test makers use some typical argument constructions okay um, particularly in assumptions strengthen and weaken and evaluate questions and in this session what we'll do is we will discuss a couple of uh, we will look at a few questions from the three areas assumptions strengthen and weaken uh, where we will put our framework to use okay so let us first discuss the various construction types you have the plan goal based questions all right so in plan goal based questions what we have such constructions uh, usually contain some plan with a specified goal then there are some details about the plan and the goal given and the conclusion is usually either about the success of the plan or the failure of the plan so this is one construction and we will discuss the framework for the plan goal construction in the session uh, later on then we have questions based on causality okay 
So causality constructions uh, have a causality in the conclusion of the argument. So what do we mean about uh, mean about uh, what do we mean by causality in the conclusion? It means that the conclusion contains a cause and its effect. Okay, so these are causal questions, and we have a framework to deal with the causal questions. Then the third most common type again is comparison based questions. Such constructions typically have two scenarios and a comparison is drawn between the two scenarios. Frequently, but may not be always, the advantage of one scenario over the other is compared and then there are certain conclusions drawn based on that. And finally, another very common type is questions based on quants. So such questions require small quantitative calculations which are mostly featured around your understanding of uh, profits and percentages, okay? All right, so uh, there is another thing here. Uh, uh, it is possible that sometimes a single question may be based on multiple constructions, like um, you might have a plan goal question requiring some quantitative calculation. You might have a question having two plans that are being compared and so on. So in this session, we will uh, discuss the first two frameworks, that is the framework for plan goal questions and framework for causality questions. Let us first look at the framework for plan goal type of construction, okay? So, and let me also show you uh, the difference that pre-thinking framework can make while you're solving a question. So I'll, uh, I'll bring up a question. Here is the question, all right? Give it a shot your way, and then we will solve it using our GMAT with Prethinkers Guide Framework for Plan Goal Questions. So here is the question, and happy solving, guys. Uh, I'll bring up the poll in a minute. Okay, I can see that um, all of you have uh, put in your answer polls here. So I'll just quickly count in and end the poll. If you're ready with your answers, put in your answers. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, so let me end the poll here.
Now the the class is divided uh, uh, over choice B. So twenty five percent of you have chosen choice B. Uh, twenty five percent of you have chosen choice E, and fifty percent of you have chosen choice D. So uh, let us quickly move forward with our understanding or analysis of the passage. Okay. And I'm going to show you the framework to be used for this question, which contains a plan and a goal. So I hope you're ready. And here it goes. Okay. So the first sentence of the passage is Super Express Shipping Company, okay, uh, has implemented a new distribution system that can get almost every pack package to its destination the day after it is sent. So if we simplify this, what we can get to understand is Super Express Shipping Company, okay, let's call it SESC for short, has started a new distribution system. This system will help to deliver nearly all the packages to its required destination the day after it is sent, that is of taking the booking. So from this, we can infer that this system will normally deliver all packages by the next day. That means it'll take one day to deliver the package. Okay, let's read further. The company worries that this more efficient system will result in lower sales of its premium next day delivery service because its two day service will usually arrive the following day anyway. Now we have to be careful here, it's a long sentence. So be careful and see what it really means. So what we understand from this sentence is SESC has a concern regarding the new efficient system. Okay, what is the concern? SESC has a delivery service called the premium next day delivery service and which also delivers packages by the following day. So understand, uh, premium delivery service delivers package uh, the next day. Okay, under the new distribution system, all packages, that means including all packages, uh, that is the ones who are not premium, the normal packages will also reach the following day. So as a result of this, SESC is worried that the new system may adversely impact the sales of the premium service. So if, under the new system, if normal delivery is also going to help packages uh, being delivered the next day, then people may not opt for the premium service, okay? Since the delivery time is the same for the both, okay? All right, so let's now read the uh, next sentence of the par paragraph. The company plans to encourage sales of its next day service by intentionally del delaying delivery of its two day packages so that they will not be delivered the following day, even if the package arrives at its destination city in time for next day delivery. So understand here, a lot of information, okay? SESC has a plan and a goal. The goal is to boost the sales of premium next day delivery service, all right? And for that, they have planned to deliberately delay the delivery of normal two-day packages, okay? Because under the new system, the normal two-day package will reach the next day, all right? Not in two days, okay? And then people will not opt for the premium next day service. So the mechanism here to be used is the deliberate delay will stop the package from being delivered the next day, okay? So what what we can give, be given to understand is probably uh, uh, the inference that can be drawn is SESC hopes that people will opt for the premium service to get their packages delivered in two days. All right. Okay. So this this is the understanding that we have drawn about the entire system. So SESC has a new system which is applicable to all the normal packages, which will help deliver the normal packages the next day. It has a premium service which also delivers packages the next day. So, so that the premium service won't get affected, they will, uh, 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 by using the new distribution system, they will deliberately delay the time of delivery of the normal packages so that it reaches uh, in two days instead of one day. In that sense, people will still opt for the premium service. That is the thought process. So, 
Now, this is the plan and this is the goal. And the question was asking us to identify, you know, uh, uh, to identify what will help the company's plan to be successful. So what has the company's plan assumed? Okay. Now, follow closely the framework. So when we are looking at plan goal questions, the first step is to identify the plan and the goal, which we have already done. The next step is to think what happened at the planning stage. So since it's a plan, the framework, the first step is identifying what happened at the planning stage. So when you're thinking, you're thinking along the lines of what happened at the planning stage, you put yourself in the place of SESC and think what you might have thought at the planning stage. So let's see. Before the new distribution system, two services were available, the normal service, okay, and this used to deliver products in two days and the premium service, which delivered the products in one day, that is the next day. After the new distribution system was put in, normal services will also deliver products to the destination next day, that is the same time of as the premium service, okay. That means normal service is now going to offer the same benefit, okay the same benefit all right as the premium service offers so many premium service sales may convert to normal service sales if it's called a premium service sales high chances it is a costlier service okay but even then if the normal service and the premium service are both doing the job uh, as efficiently then people might start opting for the normal service so to stop this decline in premium sales from taking place normal delivery uh, normal service delivery is being intentionally delayed okay to deliver the product in two days so the assumption that the author is making here is that is the SESC is assuming that the customers who are supposed to get the delivery next day by using the regular service the normal service but are getting it in two days they will not object to the two-day delay that is they are fine with the two-day delivery okay all right so this is one assumption that we can come up when we are thinking about what happened at the planning stage? At the planning stage, SESC assumed that customers would not object to the two-day delay, all right, in the normal service, okay? The next step in plan goal thinking is to think along the lines of what happened at the execution stage. That is when the plan was carried out or would be carried out, what might happen? So here, again, the guided thinking is what happens once if the plan is executed and the customers find out about this deliberate delay? In that case, customers uh, may no longer want to continue availing of SESC service, all right? So the assumption that SESC is making here is the customers will not come to know of the deliberate delay being caused in the delivery of their packages, okay? The third step is to think what connects the plan to the goal. So what happened during the planning stage, what happened at the execution stage, and what connects the plan to the goal. Now the goal of the plan is to boost the sales of its premium next day service. Now ask yourselves, what if the deliberate delay causes damage to the company's goodwill? Okay, somehow uh, make the customers feel that the company is not doing its job, it is shoddy, it is tardy and delaying. So in that case, what will happen? That will defeat the purpose of the plan. If overall customers are lost, then SESC is going to uh, really lose business. All its worries will come true. So the assumption being made here is that deliberate delay will not cause a significant number of customers to stop using SESC services, okay? So now let me put up a poll here, okay? Let me put up a poll here and ask you guys this. Have all of you under, understood this pre-thinking uh, framework for plan-based questions, plan goal-based questions? Are you clear with this? There will be three steps here. What happened during the planning stage? What happened during the execution stage? And what connects the plan to the goal? Have you understood this clearly? I mean, th this is the framework. You're, you've got to think along these lines. And this makes the pre-thinking really, really guided and really easy. I, will, I have another question on plan goal based uh, question just after this, where I will let you try out this framework on your own. Great, so I have a 100% answer here. All right. With those three uh, assumptions in hand, okay, let us now move to the answer choice elimination stage. So here it is. Okay, 
choice A says, most people do not have a preference for either two-day or next-day delivery. Now, if majority of the people do not have any preference for either two-day or next-day delivery service, then there would not be in the first place any premium service. So this choice actually uh, talks about an irrelevant scenario, okay? And therefore, it is not correct. None of you chose choice A, so that is also fine. All right, let us now move to the next choice. Let's see what choice B says. If the plan is not implemented, okay, if the plan is not implemented, the company would lose more money in lost sales of overnight deliveries than it would save with its new efficient distribution system. So this choice presents the reason for making the plan, okay? It could, this is the reason why the plan was made, definitely. If the plan is not there, this will happen. More loss is going to be there. So this could definitely be the reason behind making the plan. But our question stem was asking us, the plan assumes that, okay? So this choice states, if the plan is not implemented, all right? So we have to remember that the conclusion is not about what happens if the plan is not implemented. The conclusion is about what is required for the plan to work. Therefore, this choice is out of scope, all right? Understand the difference. This plan, this choice talks about a scenario when the plan is not implemented. But our assumption has to be uh, when we are talking about the plan being successful, okay? What is the assumption made while making the plan? So some of you mark choice B as the correct answer choice, all right? Let me ask you guys, those of you who mark choice B as the correct answer choice, those of you who mark choice B as the correct answer choice, are you clear why choice B is incorrect? Are you clear why choice B is incorrect, guys? Yes, are you clear, all of you, why choice B is incorrect? Because just eliminating a choice is not enough. You should know the reasons or you should have the correct reasons for eliminating a choice. So for those of you who mark choice B, are you clear it is why it is incorrect? Okay, great. Let's move to choice C. What does choice C say? The overnight service is too expensive to be attractive to most customers currently. All right. So the argument is not concerned with the costing of the services. Nowhere the costing uh, is raised here. Thus, the choice is out of scope. Now, you understand, understanding the scope of the argument is very important. We saw the last choice was also out of scope because it spoke about a scenario which is not the concern of the conclusion, a scenario where the plan is not implemented. Again, choice C, we're talking about the costing of the services, which is nowhere raised in the argument, all right? Therefore, this is also out of scope and is incorrect. Okay, let us now move to choice D. Deliberate delay of packages will not affect the company's image in a way that significantly reduces its ability to attract and retain customers. Now, in short, if you see what D is saying is along the lines of assumption three, okay? Assumption three was that the deliberate delay will not cause a significant number of customers to stop using SESC services. And this says it will not affect the company's image such that a significant number of customers are reduced. So choice D is the correct answer choice. Once again, let me ask all of you, let me ask all of you, are you clear with this discussion so far? Are you guys clear with this discussion? as to why choice D is correct. So you can see uh, guided thinking or pre-thinking using the framework becomes so easy. It becomes very, very natural actually. It's a plan, there is a goal. So what happened during planning? What happened once the plan was carried forward? And if there is any connection between the plan and the goal? These are the three lines along which you need to think. You don't need to think anywhere beyond this. Okay, there is no compulsion that you have to use the framework, but the framework does make things easy. Great, so all of you have a clear understanding here. Therefore, let's move to the next choice. Choice E. Okay, some of you chose choice E, so let's see. Competing companies' delivery services rarely deliver packages to their destination earlier than their promised time. 
Now, if you see again, the argument does not contain any discussion about competing companies and what they offer. All right. There is nothing given about how these competing companies' deliveries impact the sales of SESC. There is no relationship also given either. Thus, this choice is also out of scope of the conclusion and the argument and therefore is incorrect. Okay. So, you see, identifying the scope of the argument is very important. So, to sum up our discussion so far, in order to pre think along the correct lines and not waste time, you need to understand the passage correctly first. Second is pre thinking becomes a whole lot easier if you have a certain framework to think, think within. So, for plan goal questions, the framework is to think about what happened during the planning stage, what happened during the execution of the plan, and what is it that connects the goal and the plan. All right. Okay. So, so far, all clear to you guys. And I can bring up the next question. Let me just quickly put this poll up. Give me a moment. So, are you clear with the discussion so far, guys? Are you clear with the discussion so far? Ready to give the next question a shot? Now, this question that we discussed was an official question. Now, I'm not going to give you any more official questions. So, you will not be familiar with those questions either. Some of you might have been familiar with this question. But the next question. You're not going to be familiar with it and let's see what you do with it. Use, uh, I know you would have your own uh, methods, but I want you to use this plan goal based framework. Okay, use this framework, the, the four steps rather. So one, you will be identifying the exact plan and the exact goal. Next, you will be thinking along what happened during the planning stage, what happened during the execution stage and what is it that connects the plan to the goal. Again, it is not necessary that you think along all three lines. It is just possible that you think along the first two and you come up with an assumption and then you leave it at that. That is also fine. As long as you can come up with at least one assumption or one strainer or one weakener as the case may be. So here comes the next question for you. Okay. But I am sure that you have seen for yourselves how easy it becomes to confidently eliminate the incorrect choices if you have the pre-thinkers uh, guide framework. So here comes your question. Give me a moment. Here is the question on your screens now and all the best for solving it. I can see that uh, almost all of you have answered it. 
answered the question. But this is a small thing, guys, I would like to mention. So my, um, the idea was to ask you to use the uh, plan goal framework. So let me see. Let me put up a question. Um, and I mean, you can answer in the chat boxes. How many of you all used the plan goal framework and found it to be effective? I mean, effective, we'll, we are still to see, but how many of you all thought that the framework actually helped in pre-thinking? You can answer in the chat, guys. Use the chat box to give me your answers so that I would know uh, how far you've followed the, you've been able to implement the plan goal framework. How many of y'all found the plan goal framework really helpful when pre-thinking? Yes, guys. Okay. Okay. All right, let's, uh, so I'm going to end the poll. I would count 10 and end the poll. So if you have your answers ready with you, just mark the correct answer choices. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I'm going to end the poll now. Okay, the class is divided. 50-50 over choices B and C. So hold on to that and let's get on with our discussion and see which of the answer choices is correct. Okay, so we will begin with analyzing the stimulus. The mayor of Hotwitz, an economy mostly supported by large-scale businesses, planned to create special economic zones, the SEZ, which would attract small and medium-sized businesses to set up their establishments, but would not have much to offer large-scale businesses. Okay, so here we have a plan and a goal mentioned. The plan is to create special economic zones, and the goal of this would be to attract small and medium-sized businesses to set up their establishment. Now, what you have to note here is the SEZs are not meant to attract large-scale businesses, okay? This is one thing to be noted. And the other that Hotswitz is an economy which has majorly large-scale businesses, so very few small-scale businesses otherwise. All right, let's read on. The idea was to attract more investors to SEZs by making the SEZs a more financially viable place to set up businesses. So what was the mechanism through which the plan would work? The SECs would be made attractive in such a way that the investors would want to invest in the businesses which would be set up in the SECs, since such a move would bring some kind of returns on their investment, some financial returns on their investment. But the question stem is asking us to identify a choice that shows that the plan was successful. So we are all talking about the past tense. We're talking about the uh, to show that the plan was carried out and it was successful. What will show us that? So if we are using our plan goal framework to think, then the framework, the first step would be to identify the plan and the goal, which we have done. The first step is what happened at the planning stage, okay? Now, the mayor believes that there are investors who would be interested in setting up small scale and medium scale industries provided they get a good ROI. This is what the mayor has assumed. So a strengthener would be any statement that indicates the presence of such investors. Any statement that says that there are investors, you know, uh, who are ready to set up small and medium scale industries in the SEZs would be a strengthener. All right. And you will see the strengthener, we already know that the strengthener is usually based on the assumptions valid in the particular uh, argument. Okay, so let's see. The next step would be to think what happened at the execution stage. All right. Now, 
in the passage it is, it is just mentioned that the secs were made attractive to investors from the point of view of finance okay so a strengthener would be any statement that gives more information that gives you details about the financially attractive policies because no such policies have been mentioned all that has been mentioned is it was supposed to be a more financially viable place so how was it made financially viable what were the policies any information on those policies would be a strengthener supporting the success of the plan okay all right now the third so say for so as i was saying so, say some some statement which says special subsidies or tax benefits were given which led to the setting up of many small and medium scale industries in the secs okay finally uh, the third is what happened at the execution stage okay so uh, sorry the second part step is what happened during the execution stage now the secs must have been specially planned okay all right so what if some unforeseen problems were encountered by the people intending to set up businesses in the secs all right if such problems were there then the secs would not be uh, they would not be able to set up the secs so a, another strengthener would be a statement telling us that there was no unforeseen financial drawbacks that came up and the small and medium scale industries flourished in the secs this is what we call guarding against a weakener okay finally what connects the plan to the goal very simple the success of the plan can best be indicated by data about the new small and medium scale industries that were set up in the secs we have to remember that most industries in, in hotwits are large scale and maximum contribution is currently made by them so a strengthener here would be any statement that gives us data showing that the small and medium scale industries in the secs flourished and added to the economy of hotwits okay so see how we were able to come up with four strengthers okay based based on the information given in the passage and more importantly by using the framework here okay the framework acted like a real good guide to pre thinking so those of you who uh, use the framework and those of you who were not successfully able to use it please remember it is something that you need to keep doing in order to get the hang of it it's something that new that you're learning here armed with those four strengthers let us move to the answer choice elimination and we'll see which of the answer choices is correct choice a tax benefits special rates of interest and other financial subsidies have in the past helped many economies similar to hotwits grow all right now this choice does mention some financial benefits okay it does however this choice does not tell us whether these benefits were given to small and medium scale industries or to large scale industries or both also it does not tell us whether similar secs were created so this choice is basically a distortion of the idea of secs being made financially attractive it is distorting that idea and therefore is incorrect let us now move to choice b since 50% of the class chose choice b let us see whether it is correct or not choice b says in greenwich that is hotwits twin city so when we say twin city the implication is it is similar to hotwits in all respects post the, so in greenwich post the creation of secs after the creation of secs the economy grew by an unprecedented 6% when measures were taken to encourage investments in businesses okay this choice does not tell us whether the small and medium scale industries flourished and added significantly to the economic growth okay for this choice the growth could have taken place without the secs scheme being successful this choice just tells us that there was there was a 6% growth in the economy after the creation of secs but it does not tell us whether this 6% growth was because of large scale businesses or small scale businesses or both okay so again the growth could have come from either ways and because of this ambiguity this choice is incorrect it does not uh, support the fact that the creation of the secs was successful okay so let me again ask you guys those of you who chose uh, choice 
B as the correct answer. Those of you who chose choice B as a correct answer, are you clear why this choice is not correct? Are you clear why choice B is incorrect? Great. Let's move to the next answer choice in a moment. Yeah. Okay. Choice C. What does choice C say? Let's see. In hot bids, although the few existing small and medium scale industries did not register growth, the creation of SEZs led to a significant increase in the contribution made to the economy by small and medium scale businesses. All right, what does this say? Now, this choice is in line with Strenner 4. How? This choice clearly tells us that the impact of the SEZs on the growth of small and medium scale industries was there. The existing small and medium scale industries did not grow. That is given in this choice. Okay, yet the contribution made to the economy by small and medium scale businesses increased. So, which small scale, which medium scale businesses are these? They are not the existing ones, but they are definitely then the ones that were added by the addition of the SECs. So, this can mean only one thing that more and more small and medium scale businesses were set up in the SECs, and therefore, this choice is the correct choice. All right, so you see. Uh, a, a clearer understanding of the passage, the stimulus, will always help you move to the right answer choice. All right. And if you are pre thinking in the right direction using frameworks, it is all the more efficient. All right. Uh, at the beginning, I saw that almost all of you had marked choice uh, B as the correct answer. Okay. And it was only uh, after that that some of you changed to choice C. So that confusion you don't want during the exam because that could so very easily turn out to be nasty. All right, though we have chosen the correct answer choice, we still have two answer choices. So let's see on what grounds they have been eliminated. Most of the SECs were planned in remote areas where the costs of transportation and labor were very high. Now, this talks about a disadvantage of the SEC. So this choice actually weakens the idea of financial viability of the SECs and therefore it is not the correct choice. None of you chose this, so I'm sure just you need to check whether you eliminated it for the right reason. Let us look at choice E. Many investors are reluctant to invest in small and medium scale businesses as the return on investments are often low and risks comparatively high. This choice is almost the opposite of Strenner 1. You know, there aren't too many investors who are uh, uh, interested in investing. And therefore, this choice weakens the conclusion and is incorrect. Okay. So, you have seen uh, the plan and goal framework in action um, for two questions. You have also seen that uh, if you're using the framework, sometimes you will come up with uh, choices, you will be able to eliminate the incorrect choices based on your pre-thinking. Say, for example, if you look at choice E, the choice E you are able to eliminate because you already thought of Strenner 1 and you know that this is the opposite of that Strenner. So therefore, this is a weakener. It's not the correct choice and you eliminated it. Okay. So that is what the framework does. Efficient and effective. Now, we will look at another framework that is the causality framework to be used when we are looking at causal arguments, all right? So here, uh, uh, here goes, okay. Well, what is a causal argument? It is an argument in which uh, the conclusion contains a cause and effect relationship, okay? That is the author states a cause and the effect brought about that cause in the conclusion itself. Now, the core assumption, the central assumption behind such conclusions is that there was no other cause responsible for the stated effect. Right? The author assumes that there is no other cause that can be responsible for the stated effect. So, let us quickly get on with the framework to be used for causal arguments before I give you a question to try out that framework. So, the first step is to identify the causality that is present in the conclusion. And remember, you have to be very precise. Sometimes the conclusion can be a very lengthy sentence. So you have to be very precise as to which part of the conclusion is the cause and which part is the effect. You name them X and Y respectively for the sake of convenience. So your cause is 
let's say x then the effect of that cos x is y so these this is your causality then thereafter you follow the three guidelines as i call it first guideline is x happened before y okay so thinking along these lines we are basically trying to identify a choice which says no other relationship or correlation exists between x and y so it was not that x and y happened as a coincidence uh, it is not that x and y could not have you know the two events could not have happened because of a third common cause all right so by coming up with such choices or choices along these lines we will be able to identify the assumption okay that x happened before y let us look at guideline the next thing is to think nothing else caused y that is no alternate cause guideline so as stated earlier if there were any other cause possible behind the effect the author could not have arrived at the conclusion therefore the assumption is there is no other cause possible behind the given effect the third guideline to be used for coming up with an assumption in a causality question is no reverse causality that is the assumption is y could not have caused x all right in a way guideline 3 is linked to guideline 1 but we have put it separately because you could come up with different assumptions here all right so y could not have caused x indirectly means that y should not have happened before x and it should not be the cause of x so any statement that tells you that the uh, uh, the effect could not have caused uh, the cause then that is also an assumption here okay so you think along these three lines when you are pre thinking for causality based questions okay you assume that the cause happened before effect you assume that nothing else caused that effect and you assume that the effect did not cause the cause okay so are you clear with this framework guys let me re let me reset the poll and ask you are you clear with are you clear with this framework great okay all right so let me bring up the question for you one second here is the question for you to try out the cause causality framework all the best guys let me bring up the poll and take your time do use the framework Okay, I'm going to end the poll on a count of five. So if you have your answers ready, please mark your answers. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, so 
you were divided between options B and C. Most of you have marked C as the correct answer. In fact, oh no, I have it here, sorry. All of you have marked C as a correct answer. All right, so let's quickly get into analyzing the passage and move on with the discussion. Here it is, okay. For the last quarter of the year, so environmentalists have been campaigning against the use of LP gas in households as it causes the release of significant quantities of greenhouse gases adding to the rising pollution levels in the city. Okay, a lot of information here. So what we have is for the last three months of the year, there have been campaigns led by environmentalists against LP gas used in houses. And we have a fact given about LP gas. It emits considerable amounts of greenhouse gases and this contributes to the increase in the pollution in the city. Okay, let's read on. During this period, there has been an 8% decrease in the sales of LP gas cylinders used in households and a nearly similar increase in the sales of natural gas which causes much less pollution. So during the same time as these campaigns, two things have, happened, taken, uh, two things have taken place simultaneously. What are they? 8% reduction in sales of LP gas cylinders that are used in houses, about 8% increase in the sales of natural gas. Okay. And we have been given information that natural gas causes considerably less pollution than LP gas. We can infer here, sorry. We can infer here because uh, uh, it, it's given to us that it causes less pollution. So let's see. Let's read on. Sorry. Clearly, the environmentalists campaign has led people to choose natural gas over LP gas. So the conclusion here contains a cause and effect. Now, this is very important, identifying uh, causality in the conclusion. Here, clearly, it's given, uh, if you read the conclusion carefully, it's given that the environmentalists campaign has led people to choose natural gas over LP gas. So the cause is the campaign, and the effect is people switching from LP gas to natural gas. All right? OK, let's quickly now move to the pre-thinking. So, for the framework, the cause and the effect we have identified. The first weakener would be along the lines of X happened before Y. So a weakener would be any statement that shows that the switch from LP gas to natural gas started before the first of the campaign started. Okay. So the weakener would be Y happened before X. All right. Then following guideline two. That is, we find an alternate cause to weaken the causality. Here, the weakener would be any statement that indicates that something else could have caused people to switch from LP gas to natural gas. All right. Say, for example, people have become aware of certain harmful effects of food cooked on LP gas and are therefore switching to natural gas. Or you could have a weakener which says the supply of LP has been significantly reduced due to some reason and people have to now buy not natural gas and that is why they have switched to natural gas that is so you come up with see a couple of weakness here as well the third guideline that we will use here would be reverse causality so a weakener would be showing that y caused x all right so say for example any statement that shows that people opting for natural gas over lp gas has actually inspired the environmentalists to start campaigns against LP gas will weaken the causality. So with those weakness in hand, let us move to answer choice elimination. Here it comes. So the first choice A says, most natural gas providers have raised their prices over the last three months, okay? Now this choice is more likely the result of increasing demand for natural gas after the campaign started. And this does not establish or disprove the relation between the campaigns and the increased demand for natural gas. So this choice is a distortion of the information about increase in the sales of natural gas and is therefore incorrect. All right. Okay, let's move to choice B. Here is choice B. In the last decade, the sales of LP gas have never been as low as they have been in the last three months. All right. Now, although this choice does not state the reason for such low sales now, it kind of suggests that the low sales might be because of the campaign. Okay. 
in that case this choice in a remote manner supports the causality and is therefore incorrect but let's now move to choice c there is choice c this choice provides an alternate cause let's see how majority of the lp gas manufacturing plants have been facing labor unrest in the past few months leading to strikes and such shutdowns okay so the alternate cause here okay it, it's along the lines of a, a weakener too which says that something else that caused the switch right so this choice tells us that if most lp gas plants have shutdowns and strikes then production and consequently supply or sales will fall so this could be a reason behind most people buying natural gas and therefore choice c is correct so all of you were correct on this uh, question right let us quickly eliminate choice d and e on solid grounds of reasoning what does choice d say if the people pay close attention to the awareness campaigns they might be more likely to act upon it right okay this choice supports the causality all right and therefore it is incorrect all right let's look at choice e it is known that lp gas emits less than half the greenhouse gas emissions than coal fired power plants okay so uh, what we are saying here is the comparison in the argument is between lp gas and natural gas thus the comparison between lp gas and coal fired plants is irrelevant to the conclusion and therefore this is incorrect okay now you might be wondering whether you have to use the framework well it is up to you but the framework does make pre-thinking easier okay initially it might seem time consuming but with practice it becomes intuitive and actually saves time it sets you on the right path to pre-thinking so as you can see uh, how pre-thinking really helps in uh, uh, setting you on the right path how using the framework sets you on the right path to pre-thinking it makes pre-thinking more efficient and effective right so uh, with that, uh, we come to the end of this webinar. And if you have any questions, please ask. Okay. Right, you can ask your questions now. All right. So thank you for attending the uh, webinar and a very good night to all of you. You can see that you don't have any questions here. All right, thank you.